we're going to do the same portrait two different ways. The second part, we're going to get into a little bit more of an almost uh, automatic type of drawing where you're going to be a little bit looser, more improvisational, and more of a flow kind of concept. Some of the concepts that are in jazz music. So for this project, for both portraits, you're going to use a photo of a jazz musician. We're going to use the photos of Herman Leonard. He's got some really great jazz images. Let's check out. So when we go into his website, I'm under the jazz tab here. Let me talk you through how to choose a good portrait to do. If you look at these first three, what you're looking for is a photo of a jazz musician while they're performing. You do want to have motion. You don't want to have emotion. You don't want to have a perfectly posed kind of static portrait because as you're drawing, you're going to be doing, like I said, one very traditional kind of tight representational the way you see it portrait. And the next one is going to be very loose and fluid. So we want movement to get us that fluidity. So this is going to have a little emotion to it. It's more of an emotive photo versus this is a little more static and reflective. That top one, Art Blakely, would be great. These would not translate real well into movement. This one right here could work. These are a little too static. You also want to not get into silhouettes because you need the information for highlight and shadow. Beware of photos like that one where he's singing but it also looks like it could potentially be posed in that moment. Beautiful photographs. Singers, saxophone players, trombone, all that. So right now we have a lot of movement kind of captured in his face. And we got movement in the saxophone and the hands. So this would be a great photo to use. So as you go through, I'll keep looking for ones like this. That one. That one's going to definitely work a lot better than this one. Totally different photographic techniques, and they're great. <laughs> but you want to be able to see information on the person's face. You need to be able to see highlight and shadow. You want some sort of movement, emotion um, captured in the act. This one, head thrown back, there's this nice arc to it, and there's a nice movement with the hand. Once again, that'd be great. So as you go through here, you're going to find a photo that you like. This one is a great photo that could work. It's not in action, but because of the smoke and the movement of the composition, it could work, but that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. If they're not playing, then you definitely want to have something that, where they're laughing or talking or smiling to get some kind of movement. But once again, that's going to be a lot more of a challenge than this one. Classic Louis Armstrong. Okay, so lots to choose from. Lots of great photographs. So find one that appeals to you. Find one that you can do both styles. You do need to do one very traditional with hatch and marks, hatching, cross hatching, stippling. And then you're gonna do one that's loose and interpretive and flow. So we'll get into that a little bit later. So we have talked about how to set up your traditional portrait in terms of whether you capture the whole pose or if you zoom in and just do part. So right now, it's a little light because it's a light sketch, but right now the head is this big and then the saxophone would be here. So I'm pretty much covering up this much of my paper with the portrait. Similar how I would maybe approach it for the flow. But for me to get all those hatch marks in, especially onto the face, and this is not gonna be big enough. So this is about how big the head is right now. So alternatively, this is the head. What I'm doing is zooming in just on the head and a little bit of the saxophone. So you may want to, you're gonna do the same portrait in two different ways, but for the actual traditional hatch mark where you need to get in there and layer all those lovely <laughs> marks, right? Hatching, cross hatching, stippling. You need space to do that. So the suggestion is make sure you zoom in a little bit on your photo, right? Focus on the head, blow that up a little bit so you have space for all those layers of hatch marks. So one half of the project is going to be a traditional pen technique portrait. 
So this is a great example. This is from a website, Sketchy. <laughs> and the artist has a really great Instagram page too if you want to see more examples. But this shows just how beautiful buildup of layers of hatching and line, cross hatching, how that all builds up. Notice a few things. This artist does really a really nice job with all this, but there are white areas for highlight, the obvious ones on the you know cheek and the forehead, but also a little bit on the nose, in the ear. These are places that are catching a lot, a lot of light. You can see it even in the eye behind the glasses. The other thing is that there's a lot of buildup of hatch marks, and notice that sometimes they're slightly curved, slightly curved to get the shape of the nose, so this is just a huge buildup of very carefully placed hatch marks. The other thing to notice is that um, when it's appropriate, you know, to get the texture of the hair and the beard, there is more of that squiggle kind of line to go along with it and accentuate it. So this is just a great example of good quality uh, cross hatching for a tr very traditional approach. It still is kind of loose. It still looks very um, modern and fresh and contemporary. Notice all the details in the glasses. The biggest thing is to make sure you have soft shading in terms of transitions. There's light white highlights, but then there's light areas. There's really, really light areas over here, areas that have not a lot of layers. And then it's gradually building up into these darker areas. Remember the darker areas are usually areas of deep shadow that are usually darker, deeper values usually translate into areas that are um, recessed, like that are going backwards away from you. These are the areas that are kind of coming forward, catching that light. So areas like skin folds inside the mouth, nostrils, folds inside the ear, these are areas that are catching deep shadow. So those are gonna get a lot more of that darker value. But notice how these areas are just nicely built up. So this is just a great example of a very traditional portrait using hatching, cross hatching. This has a little bit of a squiggle line too. You can also throw in a bit of stippling as well that way. We have a little bit of a rain noise outside. We have a great little downpour going on today. You can see how I started. Here's my pen. I have a rough idea of where things are. I went in a little bit more detail up here. As I go, I'm gonna add a little bit more detail, but you can start seeing how I'm layering a lot of pen strokes to build up the values. So especially right here on the eyelid, I have a lot of little pen strokes overlapping for real subtle areas right on the top of the eyelid. You can see when you get farther away, it's starting to get the range. So if you're wondering how to start, my suggestion is always to start with a shadow you're sure of. So for me, I started with the eyebrow because I was pretty sure of that shape and where it was. <laughs> and I know I can make it nice and dark. So I will kind of feather that out along the edges a little bit as I go. But you can start seeing the process. So I'm going to just show you a little bit more of the process. You can see I built up a few more of those layers. And for me, I like using really small pens. So some of you don't have this small of a line at home. I'm using an 003 and 005. But... 01, 02, any of these markers, any of these technical pens will look wonders for you. So you can see how I'm building up really, really small areas. So you can see I'm building up layers and layers of smaller ones. I like that personally instead of bigger far apart value. And look for the subtle shifts in here in here. There's a lot of really, really subtle shifts of light and value, of light and shadow. I'm still looking for really light areas to watch out for and save. I'm looking for the highlight that I need to save. So I'm avoiding anywhere that's really too light. So for me right here, the bridge of the nose, I'm going to come back to that like how I did here. So if I start on this side, I can start with a little bit of a darker line because I'm confident about where that is. And this is where you do need to double check and make sure that your pencil 
as I was kind of creating this shape of where his brow gets wrinkled, you know, in concentration. I do want to double check and make sure that um, all my pencil marks are correct. So I have this part kind of coming in here. So do as detailed of a pencil sketch as you personally feel comfortable with. If you can get away with less, that's great. But for me with pen, I do like to take the time and make sure I have that on my landmarks where I want them. So say like right here, it may look a little weird as I start, but this is where the main part of the shadow is for his um, brow and eyebrow as we move into things. His eyelids, I'm not going to just draw a line. Uh, you can see over here, I did actually use hatch marks to create that. So I'm going to switch pens. I'm going to 003 because I have it <laughs> and I can. So I can start in here with a really small little hatch mark. And the thing with eyelids, we've talked about this before, if you haven't really done much drawing of faces, um, you have to think about eyelids are almost like little mini cylinders. So we start with like the darkest part, but there's a highlight here. This whole area is going to have some sort of shadow. So at that point I can come and just do a shadow over this whole part, which kind of gives me a little bit more of a blend to the eyelid and the value. So then when I come back into here, I can overlap that a little bit. His eyelids, where I overlap right here, and I can kind of come back and reinforce it. Where I overlap it, that's going to look like it's actually in the crease. It's going in a recessed area. Okay. And so then as I overlap these, I automatically get the darker line. It's going to round over here. There's a lot of shadow going on. Let's come back up here to show you this part. So same thing. This is kind of a recessed area where there's a crease. So now I can overlap some of that. and get the shadows around it that are real subtle. So notice how I start. When I overlap the part I've already done, then I can kind of use that as a transition. So it's going to create a little bit of a softer roll out of the crease. And then I can do some real light, light shadow around it. And then I can kind of try to think of how to connect them. Um, there's a nice subtle shadow going across here. And building into there. And I have some highlight. See, so notice I'm using a little bit more of a curved hatch mark now to follow the shape because that, eye, that my outer outlet is really curving. So I am utilizing a little bit of that. And then overlap to create the variety of values. Hopefully you can kind of see how I'm starting the process and building up those values. If I start with a darker value, then, you know, remember that's not my final, final application of that dark value. I use that, and now as I cross over that, I can darken it and then go out of it to get like another value because I don't have a shadow that goes from to white, black to white here. So I can go into these areas, deepen this part. 
and then overlap the area next to me so I get the darker and then the lighter area next to it. Same with this area. Well, once again, I'm going to continue on and overlap a little bit. And this outside, this outer edge is definitely darker, so now I can overlap again. So I'm cross, cross, cross hatching to create a darker value, a medium, and all those range values. So this is how I would start the process. Obviously, I am uh, not done, but it's, we got some good layers going on, and I would just continue that whole process. So this is how you do the more traditional hatch, cross hatch. You can add stippling in if you want to. They're the traditional realistic, like kind of photorealistic approach to portraiture. We're also going to do a loose interpretive flow type of portrait, which we'll talk about next.